Hi, my name is Chris Edrington. I'm a wild animal trainer, and we're at Steve Barton's Working Wildlife. It's a facility with a menagerie of wild animals that uh, work in the film industry. They're so well trained, and they are so well behaved, and they're such intelligent animals, but they are a wild animal. And sometimes you don't know what they're going to do. And there's always that contingency plan. The handler is sort of standing there expecting something to happen. I, I remember holding one by the, um, by, by its chain, you know, and by its collar. And they're, when they want to go somewhere, they're going to tug you. They're going to pull you because they, they have so much muscle and, uh, and they're powerful. Some of the challenges working with wild animals, uh, actually they center around safety. We work them in uh, an electric fence. And I don't know if you all can see that, but there's a little fence right here. They have to put this like electric fence all around the set and we have to be quiet because we don't want to startle them. Thunder, here, up. good boy. If you for some reason have food on you, let's just say it's not a good idea to have a 150 pound, you know, wolf coming at you. My wolves look very nice and sometimes I get compliments to that, but other times it's like, well, I really wanted a vicious looking wolf and your wolf looks like, you know, freaking a puppy dog. So that's when you get the CGI team come in and they'll go, oh, I'll put fangs on it and I'll have him drempy blood and his eyes will glow like a demon. These are the happiest wolves you've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, they, you, you'd cut to the wolf and the wolf would be... <laughs> and in, in case there's any doubt that a human can tell when, a, when an animal is happy and smiling, you can tell. We have software that we developed in-house to track characteristics onto a face that's moving. And so we were able to deform the surface of the wolf's face to make him look scary and angry. You know, the forehead wrinkles, and around the cheek, you get these kind of wrinkles as he pulls back his, uh, as, as he snarls. And then we pulled back his lips to, uh, to reveal some pretty nasty looking teeth. And then a little bit of CG drool coming out uh, also helped. In three, two, one. <laughs> We shot a lot of the attack of the wolf, jumping on people and jumping out of the car, almost exclusively on a green screen stage. Now, what that does is it allows me as a trainer to have my wolf in a very controlled environment where nothing else is going on. There's no actors, there's no explosion of windows, there's no car you have to worry about, and there's a minimal amount of crew. Anytime a wolf jumps is pretty much 100% CG because the real wolves that head on set, they wouldn't really be able to jump or, or do anything that the director wanted them to do. So anytime there's any jumps, there are computer generated wolves. Human beings cannot interact with real wolves. You can train them to go from point A to point B, but you can't put your actor in the same frame as a real wolf. In the one scene where Rose gets attacked in the living room, it takes a lot of different effort to get the one product. We had a CGI wolf actually jump through the window. Then we had a real wolf, Sage, come in and attack a trainer playing the actress. While she pretended she was fighting for her life, but in reality, they're just sort of playing. And then is uh, stabbed by one of the other actors to what the wolf runs away. Obviously, you can't stab somebody with a, with a real sword. So what, what they do is you just stab them with a handle and then we add the sword uh, digitally on top of the handle. We, we track it in 3D and just make sure the lighting's correct and everything lives in the same universe. For some of the close-up shots, uh, I, I remember one episode, there was a wolf on top of Caroline snapping at her. Uh, we did bring in a, a puppeteer. We had Greg Nicotero, who is someone who's followed me from project to project whenever I can use him, and I finally just called him up and said, help! And he would just lay literally on top of it and just snap at it and snap at it. And we just kept shooting different cuts. And one for luck. All right. All right, ready? Oh, oh God, it's really going everywhere. It'll run out, buddy. If you keep your camera tight enough, you can get in there and snap, snap, snap the jaw. And Caroline can be like, ah, help. And the jaw can be snapping and... And you can still frame on that. And you can see that is a complete fake stuffed wolf. And that thing saved our lives. So there's so many things that go into just getting two seconds of a wolf on camera that, boy, man, it was a nightmare.